We now present For the Record. A new report finds Dane is the top county in Wisconsin for federal funds in exchange for sharing information about undocumented immigrants with ICE. Sheriff Calvin Barrett responds. Well, number one, I believe the sheriff's top priority is public safety. And month after month, Ukrainians in Dane County are waiting on work permits. But first, in your time in education, has it ever been this bad? Never. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Naomi Coles. The first day of school has come and gone this week for many in our area. And this time around, the start of school comes as the U.S. Department of Education says the number of teachers nationwide has dropped by 280,000. That's since the start of the pandemic. Across our area, it is a similar story of shortages and one we're going to be digging deep into today with Madison School Superintendent Dr. Carlton Jenkins. Doctor, thank you for coming on. No, thank you so much for having me here today. Let's start with first day. How's it been for the Mad across the Madison District? Oh, it's just been fabulous. Just seeing our students come back, the connections with the students and with the staff, and seeing the parents actually crying, letting go of their little ones, and seeing the little ones just running in like they've been here before. But this has been an amazing start with the energy, just seeing everyone just excited to be back in school. So we're really excited in Madison uh, Metropolitan School District. We are excited to be back at school. We have a lot of parents in our newsroom, and they are excited to have their children back, <laughs> yes. back in school. You have had to answer a lot of questions about staffing shortages. You've been on local and national media quite a bit lately talking about how big of an issue shortages are going into this coming school year. In your time in education, has it ever been this bad? Never, never this bad. Uh, we've had our times because there's been a constant decline in individuals going and pursuing educational degrees. 1970, you had roughly at that time like 900 degrees being conferred, and today you have in just like 900,000, I'm sorry, and now you have 200,000 or less as we look at it. So it's fallen below like 90,000 to be exact. I mean, that's hardly, hardly sustainable levels. Oh yeah, totally hardly uh, sustainable, but we have to do many things everyone, the whole society, to begin to invest again back into education to make the staff feel welcome. Uh, our society has become very polarized. Staff up on, under attack constantly. We had this pandemic, and that just accelerated some of the uh, discontent that we've seen in education. You referenced something that sets up my next question well, talking about what's driving potentially teachers out of the business. So starting at the beginning of the hiring season in Madison, you had almost 600 teacher positions to fill. We now have that, as I understand it, down to just over 100 in that 120 range. What are teachers saying about why they're leaving? Are there exit surveys? Are, what, what are the reasons they're citing? Yeah, it's a number of things that we know as we're talking to the teachers as they're exiting, as you say, and as we're talking as colleagues as well. And let me make sure I uh, correct something real quick. We had 200,000 degrees being conferred back in 1970, and now we're less than 90,000. And Appreciate the, you bringing that up. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, we always want to be accurate, right? This is for the record. <laughs> Absolutely, for the record. <laughs> so what we have right now, we started out, it was like really 571 vacancies. It went up to 604 vacancies. Wow. And you know, this is really an employee's market. And even this month, we've had 21 to leave, but we've had 38 to come in. So it's fluctuating. So the number wasn't 120, it was like more like 130, 135 that we had in terms of vacancies. But we've had two fairs since that last time I reported out on it. And during the fairs, we had a virtual fair, we had a hybrid fair. We were able to hire some in, but at the same time too, we had some to go out. So as we get ready to start right now in terms of teachers in front of students, uh, we're still looking at about 135 at this particular time. But as I hear last night from our staff, we did hire more people last night and we're oh, waiting. Great. Yeah, we're waiting on the fingerprinting for people to be processed at this point. We had about 53 uh, staff in that particular pool and a number of them were teachers too, so that we can fill those positions. Absolutely, but if I could push you on that one point, what are the exit surveys saying? What are the teachers oh, saying who yes. are leaving? Yes, yeah, some of them are saying just the conditions in terms of feeling valued. Uh, just over the last 12 years or so, we're seeing more disinvestment in public education. When I was here back in 89, 93, we used to see the healthcare benefits really strong for teachers. We used to see the professional development commitment to it very strong. We saw a lot of commitment to not only you coming in the field, but keeping you in the field. And those dollars are becoming less and less, and we're having to take our priorities and just really 
now make decisions between what's right and what's right. We need both social, emotional, mental health for students, and we need that for staff. We can't talk about the teacher shortage without talking about teacher pay. Oh, yeah. This summer, the Madison Bo School Board only voted to allow a wage increase of about two-thirds of what the Madison Teachers Union wanted. We saw other districts in Wisconsin, districts like Kenosha, Milwaukee, even here in our area, McFarland, approve much higher increases in pay for their teachers. So, I mean, that has to be part of the, the equation here. How do we get our teachers higher pay? Yeah, one of the things when you said in the exit report, you look at other reports that's out there, um, even Secretary Cadona talked about pay being about the fourth thing on the list. It plays a part, but it's not the main thing. Our state legislative joint finance committee gave us 0% and 0% in terms of our increase with our foundation. So as a result, um, we were looking at, we are looking at, like my colleagues across the state, that in about two years, there's going to be a fiscal cliff. We all received a whole bunch of money in terms of the ESSER dollars. Those are one-time dollars. You can't plan a budget with ESSER dollars. So, yes, that may have played a part for some in terms of showing value, but the reality of it is it wasn't just this year in terms of not giving enough. We've been losing a lot for the last 12 years in education, and I think for some that may have been that uh, final point to say, hey, educators are not being valued. But what we also do in our district, we give a great benefit package. When you start comparing us to other individuals around, not just in the county, but throughout the state, we offer a great benefit package. Milwaukee and Madison are one of the few districts, the only two districts that actually still adhere to the steps and lanes that we do. Um, there are other things that we try to do in our district. So just a straight 4.7% versus the 3%, it looks like on paper that it was a lot different. But when you start adding it up, um, it's not enough uh, from our end or the 4.7 to be quite frank with you because we've fallen so far behind with teacher wages, not only in our state, but throughout the country. Not to mention inflation there. You said that uh, teacher pay was cited as number four on exit surveys. Yes. What was one, two, and three? Yeah, the working conditions. You want to think about the working conditions. When you're in the midst of a pandemic, we all had to pivot, right? You had to pivot a lot. So when you start thinking about every day you come into work, when, we, when the pandemic first hit and we closed schools back March 13th, we all thought we were going to close school. We knew nothing about COVID-19. We thought if you rub somebody on the shoulder, you would catch COVID, right? We all put our gloves on and everything. We went in and wiped everything down. We thought we'd be back to school in two days or three days. Who would have ever thought we'd have been out of school as long as we were in terms of addressing all the mitigation strategies that we had to address? So that was very stressful when you start thinking about that. So the working conditions and then just the isolation during the pandemic, it's very much been shown now, the social, emotional, mental health piece. Yes, we were trying to do it, but a part of teaching is the magic. Uh, but seeing our students, that's the piece we get into this uh, feel for to make a difference, to have an impact. And then just the attacks. The attacks came left and right in terms of whether or not our staff were doing their best. And here we were trying to carry the whole country on our backs. Absolutely. You've got to wrap up here in about a minute, but I, I do want to get a couple, uh, one other question in. We're just in regards to student impact, right? When you're dealing with all these teacher vacancies, when you're having other people cover for you know these roles, as I imagine, mm -hmm. there's an impact to students when they're being taught by substitute teachers versus teachers who have a history in the community. And no, no shade to the substitutes. <laughs> they are no, doing important no, and amazing no. work. But what's the loss to students when you don't have those teachers who know the students who have been in there year in and year out? Well, I tell you, that's something that recently you're seeing a lot of discussion about what will be the impact. We're very fortunate in our district. We'll continue to go with highly qualified. Uh, subs for us. We have highly qualified teachers that some are former teachers just recently retired and others have been long retired and even down to our substitutes we're still maintaining the standards. So I know across the country you're hearing people go to associate's degrees and some not even having degrees at all. That's to be yet uh, to be determined in the years to come. We will find out what the real impact has been of this pandemic but it will be serious and we must be intentional now in trying to address it. Dr. Jenkins, I so appreciate you taking so much time to talk through this issue this morning. It's incredibly important. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. Coming back, the ties between Dane County and the information it shares with ICE about its undocumented immigrants.